Okay, so I wanted to share a couple of thoughts that have been milling around in my mind the last few days. Um, some of it is in response to my own training, and some of it is in respectful response to Sifu Freddie Lee and some of the recent posts on the FMK YouTube channel regarding sparring. Now, the other night, I was um, given the opportunity to spar for probably the first time in eight years and I was uh, really ecstatic about the experience. It was very exhilarating and familiar and I missed it. I grew up on sparring. Um, the earliest martial arts practice that I was involved in from age 12 to 18. My Sifu was a, he, he came from a competitive fighting background and so our training was really intensely physical and it involved a lot of sparring and it also involved a lot of um, what we called street situations where you'd have multiple attackers and we'd act out potential scenarios and carried through in fighting. And that experience was really good to me. Um, when you practice sparring for, like that was six years that I was uh, sparring and they were formative years for me. I was still a child so it was, I internalized a lot of it. And, you know, I'm not going to say um, that I'm any kind of great fighter or anything like that, but through that practice of sparring, I, I learned a lot uh, in regards to being proficient um, in that kind of combat situation. Um, I think sparring is really an essential tool that any martial artist who has the physical ability to spar should uh, engage in that practice. You know, today the, the school that I, the dojo that I um, practice in, we don't focus a lot on sparring. Um, and you know, as a result, um, I can see the difference, I can feel the difference um, between someone, you know, like myself who's in there, who's had prior experience that involve a lot of sparring and somebody else who this may be their only martial arts experience and they haven't sparred and, um, you know, they may be excellent with their katas, but uh, it doesn't mean that they're able to fight. So I agree with Sifu Freddy that uh, sparring is really a, a very, very important tool. It teaches you lots of different things. Um, it, it will give you confidence. It'll teach you if you if you practice uh, contact sparring, which is what I what I grew up on was kind of uh, light to medium contact sparring with occasional um, hard contact. And in that kind of practice, you know, you learn to take a jolt um, when you get hit. You learn how to take hits. Uh, you also learn how to defend yourself from hits a lot better than if you practice like um, partner two and three step techniques and these kind of things. Um, and you learn how to read other people's bodies a bit better and you learn about your own techniques and like Sifu Freddy says what, what works and what doesn't seem to work. And it's not always the same for every person. In fact, I don't think it's ever the same for any person. Um, 
different people uh, use different techniques um, in a little bit of unique ways and so uh, what what techniques might work really well for one person might not work well for another but anyway it is it is an essential tool for learning the combat aspect of martial arts but having said that um, there's also a lot of applications, techniques that cannot be used in a sparring climate. Um, some of the some of the really injurious techniques, like uh, finger jabs and gouging and claws, biting, uh, ripping the hair out. Uh, single knuckle punches to vital points um, you know there's there's quite a few techniques that you really can't use safely in sparring and so you just you just don't right so you know at least from my experience um, most sparring involves practice in your uh, movement various fighting stances. It involves a lot of punching, a lot of kicking, maybe maybe some joint locks, um, maybe some sweeps uh, done carefully. <coughs> and you know that's about it. So there's a, there's actually a lot left out of sparring that you don't get practice um, using in that kind of spur of the moment um, context. But, you know, another thing that I wanted to point out was that um, the martial arts, at least to me, is more than just about the combat aspect because I think if you're, if you're an intelligent guy, um, you can get away most of your life, especially your adult life, without having to get in any kind of physical confrontation with anybody. You know, the, the, uh, the, the exceptions are going to be, you know, if you're attacked and mugged or something like this, but in terms of, you know, people just trying to pick fights with you, you, you know, it's, it's real easy to just uh, walk away and avoid that and avoid the kind of situations where you're going to run into people that are that are like that. Um, <coughs> so, you know, to me, to, to focus uh, extremely on the, on the combat aspect of martial arts as the important key, um, then you're really saying that you're training you're spending a good part of your life, and if you're if you're a lifetime martial artist, you spend you know decades um, practicing for an encounter that, if you're smart, is probably never going to happen. But there's there's more benefits to martial arts than that combat aspect. <coughs> um, martial arts. Is a, is a is a way for you know to develop a certain kind of physical conditioning that um, I don't necessarily see in any other sports or physical activity. Like there's a certain type of body that you gain after long-term um, martial arts practice. And I guess the best way I can describe it is a feeling of connectedness you know, between, the, between the different parts of your body. So your arms aren't alone, your legs aren't alone, and your hips aren't alone. They're all, you know, everything's connected. Um, so there's the physical aspect, 
and another another part of that physical aspect is that um, martial arts can be used as as um, therapy and treatment for people with serious physical conditions, for people with um, diseases and injuries, and um, you know in that respect, you know, on, a, on some occasions it can even this training can even be a lifesaver for somebody who's suffering from a really crippling, debilitating disease, and uh, this is the only kind of physical therapy that takes them out of it, which is sometimes the case. Um, so there's that physical aspect, and then there's the mental stuff, right? So it practice in martial arts um, builds confidence. Can make you a more peaceful person, depending on what it is that you're that you're practicing. Um, teaches you discipline, and one of the things about it that's really kind of unique is it teaches you to be a teacher. And this is something that's missing from our public education system: is that um, students don't often get to be teachers martial arts that's completely different. Uh, every school that I've ever been involved in, um, senior students are always uh, tasked to teach the less experienced students. And so as you're, as you're a learner, you're also a teacher. And I think that's an important skill to learn. And then there's you know, the spiritual aspects of martial arts. Um, one of those aspects includes the respect for um, what has been transferred down from from ancestors. If you're in a line of traditional transmission, um, you know, the, the gift that you're being given Put you in that in that lineage going going all the way back and having a, a respect for um, maintaining that that's been passed down so you you can pass it down the same way to the future generations I think that's an important part too um, and in that respect a, a person would not be entirely wise to dismiss um, traditions, even those traditional styles where it appears as though uh, the training is not going to be very functional toward actual combat situations, because it's, in my experience, it's deceptive. You know, I'll tell you, after, after um, growing up with, with uh, sparring so heavily um, later on when I was in college and I, I went in practice a couple of years of Taekwondo and Taekwondo school and I practice a couple of years of Aikido and a really traditional Aikido school and I looked at other schools too and I saw what they were doing and I, I recognized that um, in a lot of cases um, traditional schools don't have that uh, that same kind of fighting training and so uh, the students of those schools often don't appear to me as though I don't have the sense that that they would actually be able to hold themselves very well in a, in a combat situation using what they've been taught but like I said that can be deceptive and I'll give you an example. Um, I'm currently practicing uh, in a Gohakukai dojo, and Gohakukai is the full traditional systems of Goju Ryu and Tomorite um, combined. So they're both treated separately, 
um, but in the same dojo, and, and uh, the, f the full systems are taught. And um, so these are traditional systems, and in some schools they, they do practice a lot more um, sparring, in, even in these systems, especially Gochu. But, um, you know, where the school that I'm going to, uh, the sensei, doesn't really emphasize sparring, um, but occasionally, um, I mean, because one of the things about sparring is that um, <coughs> when you get students sparring, um, things tend to get competitive, and uh, you lose some of the, start potentially losing some of the benefits that you can gain um, the, for the mental aspect of things and the spiritual aspect of things when you are pitting students against one another in competition of sparring. But um, it doesn't have to be that way. And I think uh, the way that sparring is used in, in this dojo that I'm talking about, um, it doesn't doesn't tend to uh, to lend itself to that kind of uh, competitive thing coming out. So um, mostly, what's practiced there is is basics in both systems and the kata in both systems, um, and you know some other drills uh, that go along with them. And so, you know, this would be one of the kind of schools that I was talking about before where, you know, in the past if I'd have walked into it and watched what was going on, I would have thought, you know, that's nice and it's pretty and everything, but probably couldn't really function uh, very well in a real combat situation. <coughs> um, but... You know, really, when I when I came to the school, what I was looking for was a lifetime uh, system, something that I could do all of my life into my old age, and, and this is the kind of system where that you can do that in. One day, um, a young sports fighter came into the dojo, and this was this was a uh, you know a cage fighter, and he was probably. You know, he's probably 24, 25, and really in the prime of his health and everything. And uh, he was sitting and watching, and he was talking uh, with our sensei. And, you know, he was pointing out that he thought that what was being taught there wouldn't work in a real fight. And um, our sensei, who I consider a master, martial arts, uh, started pointing out to him all the other kind of benefits that you can get from the practice, some of which transcend um, the combat benefits. But he also said, you know, that that the combat, the combat aspects of Goju Ryo and Tomorite were solid. And, um, so this guy continued to doubt it. He was told to go away and think about it. And so he went away. The next day he, he returned and he was just standing there with his arms crossed, kind of scowling, and he had a real uh, challenging air to him. And uh, our sensei went to talk to him and asked him if he thought about it. Yeah, I thought about it, and this stuff can't work. And the way he was looking at him, um, our, our sensei was you know, reading his thoughts. He says, well, you think you could take me? And the cage fighting guys, yeah, yeah. It's all right, come. So they went out on the floor. And uh, this guy, this this uh, sports fighter really uh, aggressively attacked um, the sensei with, with everything he had. He really went after. He wanted to hurt him, 
and you know, I'll tell you that the master on his side, what I saw and I, I witnessed this whole thing <coughs> was all he tried to do was ensure that this kid didn't get hurt. So um, he could have he could have hurt him from what I saw a lot of times and badly and he didn't he didn't try to punch the kid he didn't try to kick the kid he basically just parried what was coming at him and when the kid got in too close he was wrapped up and put down on the ground and locked up like that like nothing and uh, it was it was almost you know you could see it was almost effortless and once he uh, submitted, he was let back up, and he'd go right back into the same aggressive attack, and he'd get put right back down again. And I, this went on probably, you know, 10, 12 times. This kid was uh, laid out on the ground, and each time, He was put down on the ground a little harder. And finally, um, since they put his, had him on the ground and had him locked up and put his hand on his head and pushed his neck in a certain way, and he told him, you know, if I was a bad guy, one little push and from here and you're, you're not going to be practicing martial arts anymore. you want out of your out of your training because you know if you're looking to to fight um, somewhere along the line you're gonna run into somebody who's not nice and they're gonna hurt you. And he let the kid up and the kid was really he was quite astonished with what had gone down because he really he really was confident that none of this traditional martial art was applicable and you know what what the sensei was using against him um, were techniques that come straight out of the katas they were the more complex supposedly less efficient techniques that you never see used in sparring um, but in this situation which was less like sparring more like an actual fight because the kid was trying to hurt him. Um, they were very applicable, and they were used effortlessly, and um, to you know, incredible success. Um, the, the kid didn't stand a chance at all, and all the sensei was trying to do was make sure that in this kid's you know, aggressive approach that he didn't end up having to hurt him. So um, the kid was quite astonished himself and he, the first thing he asked was do you lift weights? Since he looked around at the dojo, he said do you see any weights here? He said, no. He said, no, I don't, I don't use any weights. This practice that you, you've been coming and watching don't think works that's what I've used and you know what the kid was referring to in terms of the use weights was because the sensei is very very strong it's very very strong very very rooted very very balanced and all of that comes from repeated uh, careful kata practice and you know really myself I think it takes a gifted person sometimes to pull all the benefits out of the, those kind of uh, traditional practices. I don't think just anybody is able to do it. I think most of the time it's true that you know sparring will take <coughs> the average person up you know to the to as high as they're going to go. But there are the, these what I would consider masters. 
gifted in a way that they're able to draw out of those traditional forms and transcend even above that, even above what sparring can give you. It's not that you know, it's not that they don't get that experience of sparring too, but it's that and then some. It, there's there's a higher level, is what I think, and I think that because I witnessed it, and all I can do is share. What I've witnessed and experienced, um, but you know that's the case, and you know the kind of the kind of strength and the kind of balance, the kind of rootedness, and the efficiency with which you know you can you can um, finish someone just now. Some of that can be gained, uh, in, in, but can't necessarily be gained in, in regular sparring practice. You have to get it in other ways. So you don't want to lock yourself into only sparring, I don't think. But sparring is, I agree, a key, and it's 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 a key for rapid development for the average person. But um, there's another level. And, you know, that's what I'm experimenting with now. You know, I don't know if I'll ever have that gift that I'm able to unlock and use the potential of those, of, of those traditional forms. I don't know if I'll ever have that. But having um, witnessed the application of that, So, you know, these are my thoughts. I think, you know, it's important to realize that all of these different practices in martial arts, uh, including the sparring, including the basic techniques, including drills, including katas and forms, including, um, uh, you know, applications, practice from straight from Kata. And of course include the physical conditioning. Um, you know, it's beyond just the, the martial applications but the physical conditioning and things like running and sit-ups and pull-ups and push-ups and all of this. Um, and training of hardening the body, training of hardening the forearms, the shins, the feet, the hands. All of these things are important, and it, uh, someone should strive for balance. Uh, not get too focused on any one one thing as the key that's going to unlock every door. So those are my thoughts for today.